Hello and welcome back to Broadside Gaming with me Zug and we're going to go over some of the simpler things for new players in Dark Tide. So first of all, if you're new to the game, welcome. Hopefully you will enjoy it as much as uh, we have been recently. So the game's gone through a lot of changes and now is actually a really good time to get into it because there's the new skill trees, there's some, you know, ease of life changes they've added in it's just in a much better spot than it was about a year ago so when you're first playing first choice you've got to make is what character you want you can pick up anyone you want i would highly suggest though starting off with either the zealot or the veteran but honestly it's completely up to you pick whatever you like create your character the only thing that really matters is the voice, because that's what you're going to be listening to. Everything else doesn't matter. Very rarely does it ever get mentioned or changed. The only two things that are permanent is your sex and your voice. Everything else you can change by an in-game editor. Well, a barber shop. So, let's just jump in. There are a few things newer players need to be aware of. And uh, we'll get into those. First of all, the ungodly load times. Even on a high-end gaming PC, the load times are ridiculous. So get used to looking at this picture. You can press space to read inspirational quotes, though. Aren't they inspirational? Anyway. So you've made your character. What do you do? I would highly suggest the first thing you do is uh, come over here and talk to the Psyker. And try out the basic training and the additional training. They're very short tutorials and they'll teach you some more of the more fiddly things in the game. It won't teach you everything but it will help you out. There is a tutorial mission that you play through. It's pretty good. It's all right, you know. But if you want additional training, you come over here, talk to her, and you can try stuff out. And there is also the meat grinder. Which lets you choose a difficulty. It just basically changes the uh, enemies to have the same health they would have on said difficulty. And you can go in there and try out weapons as much as you like. Once you've done that, you don't have to, of course, but it does help. There are a few things you need to keep in mind when you're playing the game through. So, a very important part, but it won't open up straight away, is Psymilk's Requisitionatorium, whatever the hell it is. You want to pick up these contracts as soon as they become available to you. I don't remember exactly what level it is because it's been a very long time since I've leveled and nobody on the internet seems to have the answer. So you pick up some missions and you get rewarded auto dockets. And you can re-roll uh, re these by replacing task, but it will charge you an exponential amount of gold every time you re-roll them. The first one is free on each character and after that, they double in price. Generally, these are the easiest ones to do. If you're lazy and can't be bothered, you can re-roll these to be the easiest. But the harder they are, the more they reward. And once you complete all of these, you get an extra thousand at the end for doing them. And you can do these on all four characters if you want. And it is accumulative, so you will have them across all of your characters all at once. This is a relatively new change. They used to be locked to characters, but now it's account bound, which is nice. There is a very cunning trap here, and that's called mystery acquisitions. Never waste your dockets on these. It will give you a very low level gray item that you don't want. So never, ever, ever waste your dockets on these unless you've got loads and you want to and honestly i'm going to tell you what you can and can't do if you want to go for it i highly suggest not doing it though 
and every day at midnight his very expensive items change so you can just check it once a day see if there's anything that you like if not save them up eventually there will be something and another thing we can talk about with currency is the armory exchange so there are two shops here one that refreshes every hour and it will have just random stuff in it or you can go into Brunt's armory and buy specific items as you're leveling up though unless you really want an item don't waste your money just use whatever you find at the end of missions until you're level 30. Because at level 30, you're going to be wanting to try to roll your gear. And for that, I have a handy dandy crafting guide just for you, all ready and waiting. In fact, I have several, so feel free to go and look at them. But until then, you don't want to be wasting your plate steel or your diamantine. Because this is basically the game loop. You want plate steel, you want diamantine to try and craft better and better gear. Leveling up, you don't want to be using it because that's going to be 30 levels of plate steel and diamantine you will be wasting. And as you level up, the gear is generally item capped. So until you can roll anything above 360 or upwards, there's no point. It's just a bit of a waste. So, you've made your character. You've figured out what a couple of the shops do. You've done the tutorials. What do you do next? Well, you can play the game through. For leveling up, I highly suggest doing the quick play. Pick a level appropriate to you. Generally, if you've just started, Uprising or Malice. Are generally okay levels to go in. Some people will get very annoyed at you for joining heresy but that's just people because heresy and damnation are generally the slightly higher end of playing but if you want to try them try them just sometimes people will be slightly unpleasant if a low level is joining at these levels. But quick play does get you increased Everything. Experience, diamantine, auto dockets, and plus steel. So it's generally good to do these. And when you've and uh, when you're doing that, if you want to do specific missions, just pick ones you like. So there are different conditions on each one. So this one, low intensity engagement zone, uh, low enemy. Uh, concentration in the mission zone expect fewer high intensity engagements and specialists so slightly easier and it reflects in the experience and the auto dockets you get from each mission so as you can see this is a heresy level and it's giving you 14,000 auto dockets and 4,250 experience this is a malice it has high intensity engagement zone which means it's going to be slightly harder because there's going to be big packs of specials and it also rewards you slightly more for doing it now it's always good to try out these missions and try the different conditions on them because it gets you used to what's going on in the game you'll find some you hate some you like it's just the nature of it for example i really hate um Ventilation purge, it's really annoying. But you might find you really enjoy um, the high intensity shock group gauntlets, they can be quite funny. But there's also, once you've gotten a bit higher up, you can try the Uruk level missions, which have even higher special conditions on them. And these are generally heresy or damnation level and geared towards people with higher item levels and, you know, a bit more practice in the game. They are very fun, but they also are challenging. So for now, I would say stick to quick play and generally around uprising or malice, depending on how confident you are in these types of games. Of course, you can go on higher difficulties if you want, 
just be aware some people won't appreciate it but that's online games for you generally this is the gameplay loop you pick a mission you go and do it you win or you lose but there are other things you can do in the game for example you can look at the pennant screen and each class has a set of gear you can work towards by doing penances and achievements and if you're down to the bottom there is the redacted session uh, section and that is the older level of gear that was first introduced when the game came out these are slightly more annoying to do and sometimes make you work against your entire team to do them they're not quite as bad as they were they have been changed but some of them are very very irritating and speaking of outfits if you really want to you can come over to the commissary and there are operative outfits you can buy i would highly suggest not buying them straight away because you are going to need the money for crafting gear later on i would say this is something to work towards after you have a fairly decent set of gear that you can run with and you're happy with and they've got outfits for each and every class some better some worse all depending on taste and if you really fancy it you can speak to the commodore's vestures here and you can spend real money to buy outfits some people hate the idea some people don't care completely up to you doesn't make a blind bit of difference their outfits makes no difference to the game at all do what you want it's your money but most importantly, really, it's to make sure when you have unlocked it, you come to Cymelk and pick up your contracts, because this is going to help in the long run. Return. And from there, it's generally just play the game and get used to it. Go check out some guides. Possibly check out my guides. I have many of them. Feel free to peruse. But that is the gameplay loop. It's very much the, the Left for Dead vermin tide playthrough loop. Play the game lots, craft and stuff, play with your friends, play with randoms. Shoot the things, do the missions. So I hope this helps as a very quick first look of how to get started in Dark Tide. And for anything else, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you since I can, or check out the other guides I have on the channel. I have Possibly 20 plus guides for each class, different weapon loadouts, and I've got crafting guides as well if you need those. So, thank you very much for watching. And if you've enjoyed, please like, subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications, it really does help us out. Until next time, take it easy and enjoy. I shall see you later.